Hey babe, it's time to let the dogs out. Okay. You people sit tight. Keep the home fires burning. And if we're not back by dawn, call the president. Are you having a stroke right now? Yeah, it's uh, Jack Burton. Big trouble in Little China. Do I need to call 911? <laughs> it's Kurt Russell running around Chinatown battling ancient Chinese black magic. You would know this movie if you've seen it. It's a classic John Carpenter, Kurt Russell movie. I'm unconvinced that this is an actual thing. It's a spoof on, like, the white savior trope. It's kind of set up like an old western where it's, he rolls into town, fights the local gang, saves the girl, and then leaves town just as soon as he came. Oh, you mean Shanghai Night? But this came out in, like, the 80s. Like, this was a time of big brawny men with guns and running around jungles. Okay, okay, I think you just really need to just tell me the plot. The movie actually opens up on a scene that the studio made John Carpenter add later on because the main character, Jack Burton, played by Kurt Russell, doesn't really do much throughout the movie. I mean, okay, spoiler alert, he kills the bad guy at the end. But that's really about it. He doesn't even do much to keep the plot moving forward. He's all charisma and no brains and... How is he the main character? Because the camera is following him throughout the movie. That's why they had to add this scene. One of the characters from the movie talking to his lawyer. Now, if you're protecting Jack you Burton... You leave Jack Burton alone. And we are in his debt. He showed great courage. It's honestly, it's so thrown in. Is he an assassin or like a, a fix-it guy or something no, like that? No, he's a truck driver. Have you paid your dues, Jack? Yes, sir, the check is in the mail. What? Yeah. No offense to truck drivers, but who calls on a truck driver to defeat ancient Chinese mysticism? When the movie actually starts after this thrown-in opening scene, you see him rolling into town in his, you know, rig, and then he spends the rest of the night gambling with Wang. That's the guy's name, is, is Wang. Oh my gosh, why do we let white it's, it's people supposed, name Asian people in movies? It's supposed to be a comedy, like, at its core. Okay, so Wang is his friend in town. He spends the night gambling with him and having a good time. By morning, he's got this, you know, stack of cash, and he's gonna leave, but the guy's like, nah. Nothing or double. This knife cuts this ball in half. He, okay, I have a theory on this, all right? Okay. Follow me on this. He tries to break the bottle, it doesn't work. He's not gonna slice a glass bottle in half with a knife. It's, it, it's, it's not gonna work. But what it does... I'm, I'm sorry, wait, wait, wait. are you trying to bring science into a movie with Chinese mysticism? There, yeah, this is not a movie about science. What does happen is... It's all in the reflexes. And that's pretty much about the end of his skill, is that he has good reflexes. He wants him to help him with something okay, that involves, yes. what, like I'm guessing, mad... Grabby skills? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, just stick with me. Obviously, he loses. Jack's like, all right, pay up. Where's the money, Wang? And, <laughs> and he's like, oh, I don't have it on me. Jack's like, I'm not going to leave your side, basically, until you pay me. I think Wang wanted Jack to stick with him because he says, I've got to go make an errand. I have to go pick up my fiance from the airport. Wait. She's flying in from China. So that's the thing. He wants to go to the airport with some muscle because human trafficking is like a thing. He probably knows that, you know, an Asian girl with green eyes is going to be valuable to somebody. But Jack, he's talking to Gracie. She's trying to help get this girl into America. And these discount T-birds try to pick her up. So Jack steps in and breaks it up. But in the, in the process, they end up grabbing Wang's girl with the green eyes because she's going to be valuable on the human trafficking market. How did they spot the color of her eyes? I don't know how these people can see anything with the glasses that they're wearing. 
Jack and Wang end up driving back to Chinatown, chasing these people, trying to, you know, get the girl. They end up in the middle of this gang war. The one gang's wearing red colors, the other gang's wearing yellow colors, so I don't know, like the, the bloods and the sunflowers. Oh, okay. Out of nowhere, the three storms show up. And this is where the whole black magic mysticism really starts coming into play. Give you the background so that you don't get too lost here. Too late. The main bad guy is named Lo Pan. He is this 2,000-year-old human ghost that was cursed by the first emperor of China to be a human ghost. Are you sure this isn't a Scooby-Doo episode? This could easily be a Scooby-Doo episode. What he is to these people is like... Godfather of Little China, Mr. David Lo Pan. You mean the David Lo Pan that's chairman of the National Orient Bank and owns the Wing Kong Import-Export Trading Company, but who's so reclusive that no one's even laid eyes on this guy in years? I'm trying. I'm really trying. But you are not winning any favor with this movie. <laughs> There's a lot of setup, okay? It's like I said, it starts off as a basically a normal movie, and then all of a sudden this craziness happens. He's actually pulling the strings of these gangs, and that's why his henchmen, the three storms, show up. I'm guessing by their names there's if you're going by storms, is there like a lightning guy and a thunder guy and a rain guy? You you haven't seen this movie. I have not, but when you say storm I uh, put two and two together. Okay. Honestly it's a lot of craziness and then you get exposition. The movie is actually really hard to understand. You don't say. <laughs> it's, it's a movie that takes uh, probably more than one viewing to actually understand what's really going on. Because like I said, it starts off pretty normal. You keep saying that, but everything you've said up to this point has been very abnormal. You are okay. not selling me on this movie. The reason he's after these green-eyed girls... Okay. Green-eyed girls now? Okay. The reason he's after the green-eyed Asian girl, okay. at first, okay. is because he needs a girl with green eyes to break the curse. Oddly specific. So after the scene happens, they go back to Wang's apartment... Gracie shows up and tells them... Hey. The girl they kidnapped, they took over to the White Tigers for a quick sale. So, Kurt Russell disguises himself. Think of every, like, door-to-door -door rug salesman. Kurt Russell tries to infiltrate the building and find out where the green-eyed Asian girl is. That's when she gets taken. She gets actually snatched by low pants people. Like I said, how many times does this girl get kidnapped? <laughs> she's taken by normal people and then she's taken by magic people. Honestly, I think she wants to be kidnapped because when she gets taken the first time, she's running with them, not even trying to impede being taken. So now they have to go into low pants lair to try and get her back. And the movie, honestly, the middle of the movie is boring. They go to low pants lair, they get captured and then escape. They don't rescue the girl, but they rescue a bunch of other girls. And on their way out, Gracie's taken because guess what? Gracie has green eyes. And when Gracie gets snatched, it's done by something out of Jim Henson's nightmares. Uh... And Lopan's like, I'm gonna sacrifice the one to break the curse and then marry the other one to be my eternal bride as I take over the universe. Wang's actually like a badass, actually taking out guards while Kurt Russell's fumbling with his knife. I mean, I, I would not honestly expect a random truck driver to have extended knife skills. It's true. Like I, I, can't, <laughs> I can't discount the possibility, so but I, I still am wondering why they brought him along in the first place. Why is he going with them? Is it the money? Is it a sense of, like, loyalty? And it's set up where he's going to be this, you know, headstrong action guy, but okay. then when he actually gets into trying to do these things, he ends up falling on his face half the time. We may be trapped. There's actually one literal scene where he's so amped up because they drank a bunch of go juice. <laughs> feel pretty good. <laughs> and I'm not, uh, not scared at all. I just feel kind of, feel kind of invincible. Me too. I got a very positive attitude about this. Good, me too. Yeah. <laughs> so.
Is it getting hot in here or is it just me? It's a funny scene, but afterwards he's so amped up that he shoots his gun into the air like your classic agro-American hero. <laughs> They're underground, so when he shoots his gun off, rocks fall on <laughs> his head and knocks him out for the first half of the big fight scene. Okay. And then the second half of the big fight scene, he ends up on his back with a dead guy on him like, HELP ME! <laughs> <laughs> well, meanwhile, Wang is oh, battling the one of the main bad guys. I, I, I would pay to see that. It really starts getting good at the end of that movie. <laughs> you have to wait till the end of the movie for it to finally get good. <laughs> it's really, there's a lot of weirdness that happens, and it's fun to watch, but like I said, it's confusing, especially the first time you see it. Do I need a bottle of wine? It would help. Lo Pan makes his getaway with one of the henchmen while Wang actually kills one of these magic beings. Meanwhile, Jack is in an elevator smooching with Gracie. God. He faces off with Lo Pan and he's got Gracie's lipstick on his face the entire time and nobody mentions it. He's trying to be this typical John Wayne hero. Jack Burt, me. But he's got lipstick on his face. What was he doing? Munching on her lips? I, it, they were hardcore making out. But he kills Lopan well, in this, in the kind of a throwaway fashion. He throws his knife and Lopan just steps out of the way like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone's like, what the hell were you thinking? So Lopan picks up the knife, flings it at Jack, but he uses his super reflexes oh to catch it, throw it back, and hit him between the eyes. What? And because he was already basically done with the ceremony, he was human. Oh my god. And that's what kills him. Oh my god. Because at this point, Lopan's dead in the corner, and everyone's standing there like, We did it, we beat the bad guy! And Bubble Boy comes in and looks over like, oh, My master is dead! And... Uh... And that's literally how he dies. He just, like, self-destructs. And it's literally one of the weirdest deaths you will ever see in a movie. And it is magnificent. It was death by temper tantrum? It was death by self-destructing temper tantrum, yeah. And they're trying to reach back to the surface as it's crumbling around them. Why and is it crumbling? Because one of the other guys decides to set the building on fire. Presumably, I guess, because his master is dead. I don't know. He just Honestly, they're running down the hallway, escaping. Meanwhile, he's shooting lightning into the air, setting the building on fire, instead of shooting them with the lightning. It's kind of dumb. But it's fun to watch. He gets whack a mold. One of his, you know, posse that they bring along. Like, he, he's like the, the ancient Chinese magic authority. So he's Uncle from Jackie Chan, the animated series? Well, the, the guy's name is Egg. Whoa, 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 Egg. And his enemy was Lo Pan. <laughs> I never caught that before. <laughs> the enemy of Egg is, uh, is, is a pan. See, the movie just gets funnier and funnier. It works on so many levels. That, that's one of his big scenes is he takes this giant rock and whack a moles Raiden. <laughs> and then they escape. They go back to Wang's apartment and they're having the uh, the after party. And Uncle gets up and walks away. And it's the last time you see him in the movie. So like oh, that whole God. opening scene never comes back around at the end. Are you for real? Yeah. Jack gets up and he walks out. Basically, Wang gives him the money he owes him and he's like, Hey Jack, nothing or triple. Nothing or double. <laughs> triple. You earned it. You're right, I did. And he just goes, he does the, the classic bad boy. God, aren't you even going to kiss her goodbye? Nope. He hot soloed her? More or less, yeah. And, and essentially just walks off. He does not mess. get to Han Solo her. I'm sorry, but a guy who is apparently that bad at everything does not get to try to look cool at the end of a movie. You want to talk about looking cool at the end of the movie. The final scene is him driving off in his rig, and he's 
speaking trucker wisdom into his CB radio. You just listen to the old pork chop express here now and take his advice on a dark and stormy night when the lightning's crashing and the thunder's rolling and the rain's coming down and sheets thick as lead. Just remember what old Jack Burton does when the earth quakes and the poison arrows fall from the sky and the pillars of heaven shake. Yeah, Jack Burton just looks that big old storm right square in the eye and he says, give me your best shot, pal. I can take it. It's honestly, it's kind of a pretty good metaphor for the movie. It's like he's building up this story that just kind of ends. And you're like, what? What are you talking about right now? But then it pans to the back of it and that Jim Henson nightmare pops up. And that's the last shot of the movie. So, Go to the credits. Okay, I would respect this movie a lot more if just like off screen he just gets killed by that monster. <laughs> Yeah, it kind of like leaves it open, I guess, for a sequel. But uh, I don't know. They, were I don't, they expecting? I don't a sequel? know. I don't, I don't. Honestly, I don't think they were intending to make a sequel. Okay. Um, but the movie didn't do as good as they thought. If you ask John Carpenter and Kurt Russell why, they would tell you it's because the movie's kind of hard to market. <laughs> I mean, honestly, like, it was no, hard. No, I mean, I, it was hard for me to understand, so I get why right? How do market. you make a, a trailer for a movie like this? In a world where green-eyed <laughs> girls are coveted by evil dark dragon lords, one man will bumble his way through all of Chinatown. This is Big Trouble in Little China. John okay. Carpenter, call me! <laughs> I can make your trailers. I get you, bro. I don't get you, actually. I don't understand this movie at all, I have to say. It starts out like this normal movie, and it sets it up like, oh, Jack Burton's going to be this white savior to go in and rescue the girl and help his band of ethnic friends go and, you know, save the day. But throughout the movie... Wang is really the hero of the story. He's like, I'm going to go and save her no matter what. And Jack's like, well, I'm going with you. I give it mad points for, you know, creativity. And obviously it's kind of amazing that for once it's not the white savior. I mean, he was just All some he, random guy. So he's I mean, a random like, guy. I, I guess this is the most, honestly, the probably the most... Realistic outcome is like he doesn't know what the heck he's doing. And he's just all on for the mystical ride. I don't think you're supposed to take away much from the movie. I think you're just supposed to be entertained. Qu quick question. Yeah. Was all this an attempt to put off taking out the dogs? Go take out. You cannot. You cannot <laughs> confirm or deny my intentions. I'm just trying to. I'm trying to educate you. Okay, baby, I'll make you a deal. You go take the dogs out, and we'll watch Big Trouble in Little China. Deal. Okay. Woo! Forgot how tart that was. <laughs> <laughs> it is called. It is called. Uh, you know, tart cranberry.